Hello, grade eight. How is everyone doing? So today we're going to continue with our lesson, chapter one, which is velocity of a moving object. This is the second part of the chapter and the final part, okay? So let's start. So in this lecture, you guys will be able to distinguish between an average velocity and an instantaneous velocity. Also, you'll be able to determine graphically the type of motion. Let's start. So let's have a quick review about last week's lecture because it's important and it's part, it's part of the chapter and you're going to use it for this week's lecture. So it's not like it's forgotten. OK, so we're going to need it. Let's start. The instant is the time at which an event takes place, such as the beginning and the end of an event. The duration, delta t, is the time between two instants. So delta t equals t2 minus t1. A chronometer is an instrument used to measure duration. The SI unit of time is seconds, and this is how we convert between hours, minutes, and seconds. You have to memorize all these, okay? We also talked about the average velocity, V average being the ratio of the covered distance D to the duration delta T of its motion. We said that the SI unit of distance is meters, denoted M, and this is how we convert between different units of distance, kilometers and meters. We also said that the SI unit of velocity is meter per second, and this is how we convert between the two uh, units of velocity, kilometer per hour and meters per second, okay? Of course, we have many more units of uh, distance and velocity, but these are the most common for our lecture. And finally, which is the most important rule in this chapter, is this uh, infamous triangle. Uh, as you can see, we have distance, SI unit is in meters, and then average velocity, SI unit is in meters per second, and then duration, SI unit is in second. Now, if I want to use the distance in kilometers, then the time would be in hours, and the average velocity would be in kilometers per hours, okay? Just like that. So I don't use kilometers with meters per second and seconds, okay? So it's either those or the other ones. So from this uh, triangle, we can come up with three um, formulas. The first one, V average equals to distance over duration, and then duration equals distance over average velocity, and finally, the distance equals to average velocity times the duration. So let's solve an application about uh, what we did review in the previous slides, okay, so that we can get back into our lecture today. So a car leaves Saida at 9 hours 30 minutes and reaches Juni at 10 hours and 10 minutes. Indicate the initial and final instance. So what is the initial instant? It's 9 hours 30 minutes. What is the final instant? It's T2, 10 hours and uh, 10 minutes, okay? Part two, it says calculate the duration in seconds for the whole journey. Now, what did I say in the last lecture? I said that the best way to find the duration when I have the time like this is to convert both instants into seconds first, okay? So if I converted t1 into seconds and t2 into seconds, then I can simply subtract them, t2 minus t1, and then I can find the duration. So how can I convert t1 into seconds? So I have hours, remember hours, minutes, and seconds. So from hours to seconds, I multiply by 3600, and from minutes to seconds, I multiply by 60, right? So 9 times 3600 plus 30 times 60, that's it. So I can find it in seconds now, okay? So T1 equals 
34,200 seconds. Now T2, same. So you can do it alone. It's 10 times 3,600 plus 10 times minutes to seconds. It's times 60. So the answer would be 36,600 seconds. Now I need to find the duration. So the duration is delta T equals T2 minus T1. Now it's so easy for me to subtract them. See? Before, I couldn't subtract them. I can't subtract uh, when, when the instances are shown like this. Now, after I converted them to seconds, I can subtract them. So T2 T minus T1 equals... 2,400 seconds. Part three, it says knowing that the distance by Ru Juni is 19 kilometers. So I have D. Find the average velocity of the car in kilometer per hour, then in SI unit. Okay, so first of all, I need to find the average velocity in kilometer per hour. Let's put the triangle that we know. So B, velocity, average velocity, distance, duration. Okay, so I need the average velocity in kilometer per hour. I have the distance in kilometer. So the duration must be in what? It must be in hours. Okay, great. So first of all, we write the formula. V average equals distance over duration. Now the duration that I found in the previous uh, part, it was 2,400 seconds. So I need to convert it to hours, okay? So how can I convert from seconds to hours? I divide by 3,600. So this is what I do. This is what I have to do. So I will divide by 3,600. The answer is 0 0.66 hours. Now we can substitute, okay? So 19 kilometers divided by 0 0.66 hours, and the answer is 28.5 kilometer per hour. Now it says here, find it then in SI unit. So I need to convert this to meter per second. How can I convert uh, from meet, from kilometer per hour to meter per second, I divide by 3.6. Okay, so I divide by 3.6 and the answer would be 7.916 meter per second. So we talked about average velocity being the distance divided by uh, duration. Okay, now we're gonna talk about something called instantaneous velocity. Now from the name of it, instantaneous velocity. Remember what is the definition of an instant? Instant is an exact time. So this velocity, it's not average, it's not over a certain distance, okay? This velocity is at a certain instant. It's not over a certain distance with a certain duration. No, we're talking about the velocity at a moment, at a specific moment or a specific time. Now, um, a very famous example of the instantaneous velocity is actually the speedometer we see inside uh, the car. So it tells us the speed of the car. So it tells us the instantaneous velocity of the car. For example, in this case, see the needle? It is pointing at 80. So 80 is the instantaneous velocity. 80 kilometers per hour is the instantaneous velocity of the car at that moment. Because like uh, five minutes later, the, the, the velocity might become like 120. Okay? So instantaneous velocity, it means that it tells the velocity at a specific time or a specific event. Let's read. So the adjacent figure shows a speedo speedometer. We can see it. It is used to measure the velocity of the car at each instant. So this is important. It's like uh, the definition. Okay, so it's like a definition for a speedometer. So it is used to measure the velocity of the car at each instant. What does the speedometer indicate in figure one? In figure one, so we said it indicates uh, 80 kilometer per hour. What does this value represent? So this is this value represents the instantaneous velocity. So 
The speedometer indicates the instantaneous speed of a car. Okay? And the instantaneous velocity of a moving object is its velocity at a given instant. So it's at a given time, okay? Not like the average one. So now there is a little uh, interactive application, okay, just, last, uh, just like last week. So you can see that this says click me, so you have to click this and let's do this uh, application together, okay? Okay, so I just clicked on the speedometer and it took me to this page. It says here, uh, go to the um, acceleration tab. Okay, so this is the acceleration tab. I click here, then it opens that. It says here, check uh, the speed box. So there is a speed box. I check it so that I can see the speed. This is like a speedometer here. Okay, so this is a speedometer just like the one we have on our cars and it said set friction value to none so it's just setting some things the box is at rest so the box is not moving what does the speedometer indicate so what is the value on the speedometer it's zero okay um, the box is not moving so the speedometer indicates zero we say meter per second, of course, or kilometers per hour. It doesn't matter because it's zero. Drag the man and push the box. So I'm going to hold the man like this. I'm going to push the box. Okay. Looking at the speedometer, indicate whether the velocity of the box increases or decreases. So the velocity is was increasing, right? So I say increases the velocity increases okay now it says indicate the type of this motion we call it when the velocity is increasing when the instantaneous velocity is increasing we call it accelerated accelerated motion okay Great. Let go of the box. So I did let go of the box. What can you say about the box's velocity now? What? It's uh, it's not increasing and it's not decreasing. It's constant. Okay, so the velocity is constant now. The instantaneous velocity is constant. Great. Indicate the type of this motion. When the instantaneous velocity is constant, we, constant, we call this motion what? uniform motion okay so these are new uniform motion okay now change the friction value from none to lots let me just change the friction value just like that indicate whether the velocity of the box increases or decreases so what's happening the velocity is decreasing so we say decreases decreases indicate the type of uh, this motion when the velocity instantaneous velocity decreases the motion is decelerated decelerated motion so we said that when the box was at rest the speedometer indicated zero meters per second and then when the speed was increasing the type of motion was accelerated motion so when speed when the instantaneous speed increases the motion is accelerated when the instantaneous speed is constant the motion is uniform and when the instantaneous speed decreases the motion is decelerated motion now we're going to represent these three types of motions accelerated uniform and decelerate, decelerated uh, by a graph okay so the graph will represent the speed as a function of time see speed as a function of time so when you say as a function of this means as a function of x-axis okay so it's like y-axis as a function of x-axis so this is why time is on the x-axis now 
this is the first graph so what can we see here if i told you like analyze this graph you would say that the speed is increasing as time increases okay so speed increases as time increases what do we call this this is the case of accelerated motion speed increases as time increases it is represented by an increasing straight line okay and as you can see the instantaneous speed is increasing with time so if we want to put them into a sentence we say that when the instantaneous velocity is increasing the motion is accelerated now the second case is when what is happening here the speed is decreasing so we have a decelerated motion the speed is decreasing with time so this is a decreasing straight line the instantaneous speed is decreasing with time okay so when the instantaneous velocity is decreasing the motion is decelerated and the last type is this one so what can we see here we can see that the speed is constant with time so this is what we call uniform motion which is uh, is represented by a straight line parallel to the time axis the instantaneous speed is constant with time so when the instantaneous velocity is constant the motion is uniform one last note is that in the case of a uniform motion there is really an important note here is that the average speed is equal to the instantaneous speed so this is really interesting the instantaneous speed at any instant on this straight line it is constant it has the same value so the average speed which is uh, which is over this entire duration is also having the same value as this constant uh, instantaneous uh, velocity okay so when the motion is uniform instantaneous speed is equal to the average speed now just to put them all in one graph accelerated uniform decelerated okay this is really important so that's it we just finished the whole chapter i hope you guys understood everything uh, i'll meet you in the zoom live so we can go over this chapter and solve the worksheet together so yeah take care and bye bye